Greetings, friends, and welcome to a rather random episode of Ian's VR Corner, because my Firewall Ultra Code came in far too late for me to review it properly on this channel. From what I've seen in the PSVR2 Reddit post since its launch, though, the consensus seems to be that around 40% of players are loving it and about 60% are wanting a refund. So perhaps wait for the developers to drop the promised Ultra mode before you dive in, especially if you want an experience more akin to a team-based Pavlov rather than something that feels like a bit of a letdown in terms of interactivity and immersion. But anyway, earlier this week I put out a tweet about how porting older games to VR would be easy money for developers and publishers, and this seems to have resonated with a VR fanbase which is desperately clamouring for new games. I use the upcoming game Bulletstorm VR as my main example of this because not only is it a port of a game that was originally released on the Xbox 360 and PS3, but it's also releasing on both the PSVR 2, Quest 2 and PC VR, so it's going to have a big audience. Now obviously that tweet was slightly tongue in cheek, I do realise that porting a flat game to VR isn't easy and as much as I'd like to think I am a VR enthusiast, I honestly have no idea how much work goes into successfully porting a flat game to VR for commercial purposes, let alone making a VR game from fresh. I'm definitely underestimating it, that's for sure, but then you see a trailer for something like Bulletstorm VR here and you see how fantastic it looks and it does make you wonder why aren't more developers doing this with their back catalogues? Why aren't VR companies snapping up licenses to older games and porting them to VR headsets like the PSVR 2, where there's an incredibly eager audience who are just waiting to pounce on them as soon as they are released? I mean, just look at these figures published on the flat to vr Twitter account, which shows how well the VR ports for a couple of modern flat games have gone down. There's so much untapped potential here for money-loving game devs. And don't forget, it's not just old first-person shooters like Bulletstorm that could benefit from a VR port. We've got the seventh guest VR from Vertigo Games coming out sometime in October, which takes the bones of a game made way back in 1993 and adds in a whole bunch of modern twists to it. And hell, we've already seen plenty of great official flat-to-VR ports released, like, say, Hitman VR, which, while it was a disappointment on PC, is still one of my favourite PSVR games out there there. And then there's flying around in a virtual X-Wing cockpit in the VR version of Star Wars Squadrons. That felt infinitely better and so much more immersive than playing the game in pancake mode. I mean, I literally was an X-Wing pilot when I played that game in VR. It was nuts! And then of course, who can forget Capcom's phenomenal VR ports of Resident Evil 7, 8 and soon to be 4-2. Those ports are arguably the best way to play through those games, and Resident Evil 7 is still one of my best VR experiences ever. Lycans and gentlemen! And so this leads me to the title of this video, which, just like my tweet, is a bit tongue-in-cheek with the wording, because I know in reality it wouldn't be simple, but still, could Sony save the PSVR 2 with this one simple method that I've just invented? But before I tell you my idea though, I should point out that as a huge fan of the PSVR 2, it's my favourite headset to use, and as someone who has been cataloguing all of the upcoming and previously released PSVR 2 games in huge hour-long videos on this channel, I know for a fact that, despite popular opinion, there is a fairly large library already out there on the PSVR 2. I am quite aware that, to the general gaming audience, the flat screen owning public and to a lot of video game journalists out there, the PSVR 2 does seem a bit dead. 
and I can see why. The, the launch was fumbled, the promotion of it since then has been pretty non-existent, really. There's still no real big system sellers like Half-Life Alex or Boneworks on the system, and awesome first-party stuff like, say, an Astrobot Rescue Mission sequel is mostly a no-show. But despite all of this, please understand that I am coming at this as a fan of VR who desperately wants to see PSVR 2 succeed. And to do that, in my humble opinion, what Sony needs to do to help make that happen is to create a division of in-house PSVR 2 developers whose sole job is to take previously released first-party Sony games and give them the VR makeover that they, and we, the PSVR 2 owning public, need and deserve. And here are some reasons why. Now, as much as I'd like to see VR ports of all modern flat games, what we do know already is that older games do translate to VR very well. Let's take a few flat screen to VR mods that I've featured on Ian's VR Corner before as examples. For instance, how about Team Beat's wonderful mod for the classic version of Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast for the Quest, which, despite its age, looks great in VR. Team Beef took the original flat game and not only added fully motion controlled lightsabers to it, but they also put in things like weapon scopes, gesture based force actions and much, much more. Or how about the Half-Life 2 VR mod from the Source VR team, which was so insanely good that Valve allowed the modding team to put it on Steam as an official release. These games may not have the visual fidelity of a current-gen AAA game, but once you're inside them in VR, interacting with the environments, swinging lightsabers or shooting headcrabs, you honestly don't notice or care about the age of the visuals. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that the retro aesthetic is one of the best looks that you can get in VR. I loved the look of a medieval VR, which is a modernish game made to look retro. And of course, there's the wonderful compound, which is so pixely and colourful and chunky, and this makes for a fantastically vibrant world to wrap around yourself in VR. Obviously, modern VR games with jaw-dropping visuals like Horizon Call of the Mountain shouldn't be discounted here, but if you have a VR game that's immersive and fun, the graphics take a bit of a back seat as the immersion will make less detailed worlds feel incredibly real. Which leads me nicely onto my next point, which is that playing flat games in VR is honestly like playing a brand new game. I've used this analogy many times before, but if you think of flat games as travel brochures with gorgeous photos of your holiday destinations inside that you can stare at and imagine being in, then VR ports are the equivalent of them actually being at that holiday destination in real life and staring at it with your own eyes. This honestly makes older games that I've previously enjoyed feel fresh and new and ultimately playable all over again. Good examples of already released official flat to VR ports of old games that I've enjoyed would probably be Bethesda's Doom 3 VR edition or Gearbox's Borderlands 2 VR. Despite having already played both of those games to death in flat and completing them both at least twice, twice, these versions breathed a whole new lease of life into them for me, and they felt like basically brand new games, because I was experiencing them from a whole new perspective. I wasn't just playing them anymore, I was living them, I was looking at them as if I was in the body of the protagonists, and this is the way it feels to play all flat screen to VR ports, whether they be official or community modded. But let's bring our focus back to the PSVR 2 for this next point, because it's time to check out Sony's back catalogue, which is absolutely bursting at the seams with potentially incredible VR ports. For this video, I'm going to just stick with PS2 and PS3 era games, rather than modern ones or really, really old ones. But if you Google either first party PS2 games or first party PS3 games, you'll be shown a fair few websites that list off all of these old school classics. For this video, I'm looking at the lists from Giant Bomb, but as you can see, the first entry in the first party PS2 list is Fantavision, a PS2 launch game that has already had a sequel released on PSVR 2. 
That sequel wasn't even published by Sony and it's not a direct port of the original, but still it is incredibly similar and it does come with added PSVR 2 support. So we're off to a good start and we can see that this kind of thing is technically possible. Scrolling down that list, you'll find there is quite a few games on there that could port to VR in some fairly cool ways. Games like Ratchet & Clank or Sly Cooper could get the Astrobot third-person VR treatment with standard DualShock controls, while maybe something like The Getaway could work with a hybrid of first- and third-person cameras, plus motion controls for combat. Or how about playing Shadow of the Colossus in first-person VR, with motion-controlled climbing mechanics to top off the immense immersion you'd feel climbing up one of the game's giant beasts? This could be wishful thinking, sure, but still, just imagine how incredibly cool and powerful that kind of experience would be in VR. As a first-person shooter fan, the PS3 back catalogue is where the majority of the treasures are for me, though. There's the Resistance games and the Killzone games, which would look great with motion-controlled weapons. There's a huge drought when it comes to driving games on the PSVR 2, so how about a collection of the MotorStorm games? I mean, driving cars in first person in MotorStorm Apocalypse with all of its environmental destruction popping off would look jaw-dropping in VR, I am sure. And then of course there's the Uncharted games, there's the older God of War games, and look, this once again leads me nicely onto my next point, which is... These games all have instant fan bases. There's no gambling on new IP here, there's no betting all of your cash on a Firewall Ultra that comes out as a bit of a disappointment by most accounts. These are games that people already know and love and would kill to play again in VR. Admit it in the comments if this was you, but I bet as soon as I started rattling off the older Sony games, a large portion of you started to get super excited by the possibilities on offer. A port of Killzone 2 on PSVR 2 with added headset haptics and all of that HDR 4K goodness would sell by the bucket load, I am sure. And you'd hardly need to spend a dime on promoting it either. Just one announcement trailer and a launch date would have Sony and PSVR fans reaching for their wallets at light speed. It honestly feels like a no-brainer to me, especially when, in the case of my next point... The groundwork for a lot of these games is already done. And look, I say this as a complete VR development noob, so feel free to let me know in the comments just how difficult these ports would be and potentially how long they would take, but surely it wouldn't take as long as developing a whole new game, right? In the case of a Resistance game, for instance, you've already got the script, the story, the voice acting, the visuals, and the bare bones of the experience, so you'd think that would take at least some pressure off the development. And look, I hope I'm not sounding naive here. A VR developer replied to my original tweet on this subject saying that, unless you get lucky, a good VR port would probably require rewriting a significant portion of gameplay systems for most games. So I know it'll still be a huge project, but if people are doing excellent flat to VR mods in their spare time, like say Luke Ross or Team Beef or Prey Dog, why can't big companies do it more? Sure, the community-made VR mods are often quite rough and ready, but they still deliver a huge wow factor when it comes to playing them. And viewers of Ian's VR Corner should know, because I'm always doing VR mods, and they are always blowing my socks off. And that leads me to my final point, which is... Look at this. Holy moly. Now that's a... Whoa! A little to the right. There we go. Hold it there. We got it. In order to make things easier for themselves, why couldn't Sony bring in some established flat-screen-to-VR modders to help beef up this flat-screen-to-VR division that I have just invented? The team who made the Half-Life 2 VR mods weren't employed by Valve, yet they worked together to create one of the most impressive VR ports I've ever seen, and that is fully playable from start to finish with full motion controls and very few technical issues. 
Team Beef does amazing stuff with its quest port, but think about what it could achieve with Sony money behind it, whilst also working with seasoned Sony developers who have already worked on PSVR 2 since its inception. Yes, it's a lot of work to port a flat game to VR, but if bedroom coders can do this stuff in their spare time for no money, then why can't Sony do it officially? It's not like it doesn't have the money, and even then, these ports would be for its own struggling headset, so Sony would reap the rewards financially in the long run, from both game sales and the new PSVR 2 hardware sales that would inevitably come from announcing a host of VR ports or remasters. But this is all just my opinion, of course. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe what I'm asking for is an impossibility due to licensing issues or technical roadblocks or something else. I don't know. But feel free to tell me what those something else's are in the comments if I am wrong. Especially if you work for Sony and you want to give us a good reason why this isn't something that we will ever see done. Listen, all this really boils down to is the fact that I am a passionate VR fan who only, only wants this medium to succeed. I've seen what it can do, I know what it's capable of, and I am tired of hearing people say that the PSVR 2 is dead and that VR in general is dead too. When really, there are all these obvious, to me at least, ways of bringing it to the mainstream via the power of nostalgia. So. What do you think then? Let me know in the comments below, like and subscribe to Eurogamer for almost daily videos about video games and VR Corner episodes every Sunday, and I'll see you soon in virtual reality. Goodbye.